In this video, we will cover the use of the Perspecto CPTV as a Modbus master over Ethernet. The Perspecto panel supports both Modbus TCP and UDP, but we will be utilizing the UDP functionality for this video. The Perspecto panel will interface to two of the 750-880 controllers, which support both Modbus Ethernet and Ethernet IP. The WALGO library files include pre-written programs, functions, and function blocks, as well as data types and visualizations. As previously mentioned, we will be implementing the Modbus master UDP function block. I will take just a few moments to explain the correlation between the Modbus registers and the IEC addressing used in the programming tool. You can see that the Modbus registers 0 to 255 correspond to the input words 0 to 255 on the IEC side, on the physical inputs. Moving down the table, we can see the Modbus registers 512 to 767 for the physical outputs correlates to the IEC values QW0 through 255, and so forth. This is important to understand before you can move forward with correctly pointing to the appropriate values. Now let's move on to the devices and the use of codices. As I mentioned, we're going to have an exercise where we illustrate the Modbus UDP master functionality. Uh, we have two 750-880 devices that are going to be on the network, and the CPTV panel from WAGO is going to be the Modbus UDP master on this network. So we'll be sharing data back and forth, uh, reading and writing from these two controllers here back up to this device, the CPTV panel, as the Modbus master over Ethernet. So now we're going to get started with codices, um, showing you the hardware and everything uh, for this Modbus exercise. Uh, now we want to start a new project in codices. So just a screen coming up here, and we want to select the appropriate driver is the first thing we need to do for the device we want to program and in this case it's the CPTV panels in this case the 10.4 um, we'll perhaps come back to here and look at some stuff with the visualizations and everything again our primary focus right now is just on the communication side and setting up the Ethernet Modbus master function blocks so uh, we are going to use a function block diagram our main routine here and the first thing we need to do, of course, is pull in any library files that are going to be utilized for this exercise. So we're going to go down to our Resources tab, go to the Library Manager. You see the standard libraries that normally get pulled in with this device. And we're just going to right-key click in this field here, Additional Library. And then what we're going to look for, and now what we can look for is the appropriate library file that we want to implement here. Uh, we are using the CPTV, but in this case, um, there's a library that we can use. It's actually used with multiple devices. Uh, you can see this is the standard library path for, or the default path for uh, most of the WAGO libraries when they're installed. If I look under 32-bit here and I scroll down, I'm going to find the library file I'm looking for which is this WAGO lib Modbus IP01. And then if I come in here, then I can look at the function blocks that have now been dropped in from that library that I can utilize. So from here, I'm going to go back to my POU now. And I'm going to right key click, drop a box in here, and then I'm going to look for my, utilize my F2. And I'm going to look for the <clears throat> standard function blocks, Modbus master, and in this case, like I said, we're going to use the UDP function block for this exercise. And so now you can see this is dropped in to the code, and of course, because it is a function block, I have to declare an instance of it. So in this case, function block one, again, just establishing our Modbus communications over Ethernet, and then we can start building from here. Right? Okay, so now we're ready to move forward with our code. We're going to set this to true. 
Um, we could use a variable name here and open and close the socket. I'm just going to leave it open for this exercise. Um, here, this could be coupler 1, IP address. Okay, and this is a string value. Uh, you can select it from the list, or of course, you can just type it in. Uh, set an initialized value for the IP address of one of the uh, controllers we're going to be using. Let's down a little bit. You can see up here declaring as we go. Uh, we're using port 502. Uh, you can put 502 in here. You can also leave it blank. Uh, the unit ID, that's mostly for uh, Modbus serial communications. Obviously, we're doing this over Ethernet, so that's not required. Um, next, we're going to use um, a variable here. just to establish that as our function code value and this function code is a byte value okay, we can select that um, we can also again set this as initialized value we're going to use function code 23 throughout this exercise that is a simultaneous read and write of multiple registers so now we need to um, establish here where we're going to start reading the values coming from our coupler 1. So we're just going to call this start read and you could use something to signify coupler 1 and this is going to be a word and our initial value for this we're going to set at 0 and if you remember that data table at the beginning we talked about the correlation between the Modbus registers and the IEC addressing and register 0 decimal value um, for the Modbus registers was equated to the IEC address of 0 as well 0 to 255 for example on the first 255 um, words of information or registers. So um, let's set that. The read quantity here, uh, we're just going to call it registers to read. Again, color one. And this one we're going to just set to five in this case um, you know obviously it's going to depend upon the structure of the device and all that but uh, in this case we're just going to set it to five this is also a word value um, on the write address side uh, and i want to talk about you know what uh, address or registers do we want to write to on the device and again referring to that data table you'll notice that the um, <clears throat> modbus register correlates to register 512 or value 512 is the first um, IEC address correlation between those two okay so uh, the first output output 0 if you will on the IEC side equals word or register 512 so anyway going on with this we could come in here for a start right And again, this is a word value. Our initialized value here, our initial value is 512. And then our write quantity would be red to write. Again, this is another word value. And this will be five as well and now I just want to declare a couple of things up here um, I'm going to create a um, an array for example so in data will be an array of words that we're going to utilize in our actual uh, information that we're going to point to as far as our read and write data. So in data will be the read and then out data will be the write. Um, so we'll just set the range here to uh, 128. And of course this is an array of words. 
and then I'm just going to create a second variable called out data and again that will be an array of words in the same format okay so now uh, if I come down here okay I'm just going to put this address function in here and I want to point that to of course on our end data so now this function is pointing to the array are in of uh, words here that we've created and then on the send side I'm going to do the same thing use F2 and point it to that array our timeout on here um, if you look in the actual PDF files for it again there's there's different values obviously they can be used on here depending upon your system and what you're trying to accomplish um, but basically this is just the timeout for the slave as far as when it should respond to the request from the CPTV device so in here I'm just going to select a time value yes it could be an actual variable Oops. Get rid of that and extra one in there and then of course when do we want to send the data we're just going to declare a variable here this is a boolean and uh, we do want to set this initialize value to true okay clean that up a little and now on the output side uh, we want to just to put a couple of variables out here so we can kind of monitor what's going on so just put let's see actually we'll do a CP1 so we're monitoring that one and then of course our CP1 error if there is one and with this this is also a word value okay so now um, this is really all we need to establish the connection between the two devices uh, in this case um, the CPTV as the Ethernet Modbus master and then the, one of the controllers of course we have two controllers so we're going to do this twice um, probably just going to do this one time and then show you the actual project with both of them running but uh, so we're not too redundant here so um, this is the, really the major function block that's required to establish that connection between the devices and now I'm just going to create a couple of lines of code here just to create some data so that we can send data back and forth so continuing on here I'm going to right key click network after pull this up a little and now I'm going to insert a box and again if I'm going a little fast on this just because I we've seen other projects doing this um, you can refer back to C1 again it's a function block so I have to declare an instance of it and this was going to be our start here I'm going to negate this because we're going to you're going to see how we're going to loop that start back and as initially remember we started it uh, or the initial value was true so I'm just going to negate that and we'll put a reset in here to reset our counter preset value not really important for this but we'll just put a value in there um, out data not really worried about that one actually we can just get rid of that I'm not going to use it um, excuse me on their output I should say and then here um, what I want to do is use one of those local variables that we created with regards to our out data so I'm going to put out data in here and then of course I want to point that to a specific element if you will within the array so the first element of the array that's what I'm going to point that to so this count value is going to push this information into that address here on the out data okay uh, I'm going to right key click now network after 
Just put a simple box in the end, and then just put in a timer here. Timer on delay. Oops. And of course, declare an instance of that. All right. And now, again, we want to use our start here. And negate that. And again, this is just strictly for the purpose of generating the values. Okay. And the refresh here is going to be our um, time value as far as for the timer on delay. So in this case, we're going to want to generate a count rather quickly. So the, because we're going to be pointing this actually to an analog signal at first. And I meant to actually come in here and set that initial value. So I'm going to set that to T pound 25 milliseconds. And there we go. And then our output here is going to be tied back to our start again. So it's kind of looping back on itself to start the count and just keep the count going with regards to this counter up here. All right. So um, really, uh, this is what I'm just generating again to count or generate a value uh, for our outputs that we're going to write to on the controllers. I'm going to generate one more of these or create one more of these so that uh, we can actually look at multiple devices and all that. So we'll come back to this in just a moment. Okay, now you can see uh, with the code generated now, the function block we originally created, the few lines of code to just generate values and everything like that uh, for our out data writing in this case out data one pointing to that register 512 which on the coupler controller would be the first physical output on the device and then if we just scroll down here a little bit we can see that we're writing data to this out data three so this would be your discretes in our IO structure we had two analog outputs and then a set of eight discrete outputs so our out data one would be the first analog output, out data two would be the second analog output, and then our out data three would be writing to the actual discrete signals. So that again, going back to the slide where we discussed the mapping of the IEC addressing to the Modbus registers, and this also kind of brings into discussion how the controllers map the I.O. Again, seen in previous videos, we've discussed this in detail, talking about how we uh, map the analogs and specialty signals first, and then the discretes into the actual I.O. structure itself. So that's why this mapping is kind of working out that way uh, with regards to we started, if you remember, a few moments ago, if we come up here, or start right up here was at 512 and then our start read was actually at zero. So that's at the Modbus register level. And again, knowing how that correlates to the actual controller or coupler that we're communicating with. Remember the main purpose of this was to show you how to make the Modbus Ethernet UDP master function block uh, operate within the code. Uh, you can see how easy it is to drop this in, again, going back to what we did just a few moments ago, again putting our values in here, um, knowing how they function. Of course there's more detailed information as well in the PDF with regards to the uh, function blocks themselves, the library files. Uh, you can see where I'm just generating a few signals. Here's the second node, this function block 2. You can see 10504 on this one, 10502 on the first one. And again, I'm just generating some signals here, some values, and writing that to the out data 1 on the CP2, and then the out data 3 again on CP3. The same I.O. structure, wanted to keep that similar so you can see how they correlate. Again, out data 1 
pointing to analog output one, out data two would have pointed to our analog output two, and then our out data three pointing to the discrete signals. Okay. And again, you can see those values here. And then what we can do from here is I've created a visualization as well. So we have our home screen here. Again, we go into visualizations and all that uh, and how to create those in other videos. Again, the primary function here, the Modbus UDP master functionality. But we can toggle to the coupler now. We can see our digital signals on coupler 1, our analog values as they increment up on coupler 2. Um, we can even reset the values here, you can see. And now they've started incrementing again. Um, I could even use this to kind of do a split screen, if you will, view, and then come back to the code and just look at the values as they're incrementing up here and how they correlate to the discrete signals and so forth that are going on and off, you know, making sure they're writing to the correct addresses and things like that, the correct values. So just bringing this back up, now you can see again, we can go back to the main, go to coupler 2, again seeing the values, you can see here I'm using as well the error output, so if there was any error values there on the output of the function block, we would see that here, and the ready, that boolean, the uh, communications are ready, or the comp or is open with regards to the function block, you can see here um, that output is obviously true. So um, just again running through this just so you can see what was done on the exercise. I uh, just want to show you again real quick the hardware and I'll come back and discuss uh, a few other things about Modbus regarding communications and what we're able to do here. Okay so now you can see the program running on the Perspecto CPTV panel. Um, this is just our home screen here that we created, showed you that a few moments ago. Uh, we can toggle over to coupler 1 and just look at the signals going high and low here on the discrete side, the analog side incrementing up from 0 to 10 volts. Um, we're getting our indication here from the function block that the communications are actually working and that we have a no Modbus errors for example, coming in from that error message. Um, so we can come in here and view this information here from the couplers. We can reset the counts here. You can see everything just went back to zero. Toggle that input or output to the actual device. And then we can see here, again, the value starting to increment again. Um, it's difficult to see, but the, the analog signal is actually starting to increment up. If we go back to the main, and then the coupler 2, you can see here where the analog signal is actually going higher with regards to the uh, controller itself on, on the uh, coupler 2. So again, just showing you here, analog is discrete signals. Again, illustrating the Modbus uh, UDP function block. So this is over Ethernet, so Modbus, Ethernet Modbus uh, UDP function block. Um, with this, we have, again, the CPTV panel and with that as well two of the 750-880 controllers from WAGO. Now in this case the WAGO controllers can either be a coupler or controller. In this example at first we're just showing you them uh, functioning as a coupler. So again you can see the outputs going high and low here correlating to the signals on the actual CPTV on both devices. And then there's an analog value here that's incrementing up with that. And we may take just a moment to look at that with the I.O. check tool real fast just so you can see that's actually uh, going high and low within the devices and we'll view that through the I.O. check tool. But again, our primary reason for this uh, video is to, to focus on the Modbus Ethernet side, the implementation of these three devices using Modbus Ethernet um, and how easy that is with just a few lines of code. Uh, simple function block, and of course the incorporation of the, the appropriate library files. Okay, so now you can see um, the I.O. check tool is running. Just wanted to show you this briefly. Here's the 10.5.0.2 node, and just quickly showing you, again, the digital outputs and the analog signals uh, being shown 
to increment up and just their values here. So again, this in our code, this digital output range here was the reference 514. This was 512 and this was 513. So that would reference the IC side, QW0, QW1, and then QW3. And to take a little bit further, when you looked at the code and you saw your out data, this was out data 1, out data 2, and this, of course, is out data 3. So again, just trying to tie it all together so you can see how the out data, how that was pointing to a specific register, which also correlates to a specific IEC address. Okay, so just wrapping up here, uh, again, our primary focus was the implementation here of the Ethernet Modbus Master UDP function block with our Perspecto CPTV panel. Again, this uh, CPTV panel is acting as the master device, and then we had two WAGO 75880s acting as couplers, just drops on the, the network uh, over Ethernet. And again, you can see here some of the values as far as the declaration with the actual function block, the uh, string here for the actual IP address, the function code we were executing, again, your start read address at zero, which again, referring to that table, takes you zero to 255 was your inputs, and that correlated directly with the Modbus registers in the IEC, and then our start right here, the 512 to 767 actually correlated to the IEC addressing 0 to 255 on the outputs. So these were our inputs, these are our outputs. And then as you saw, just creating these two arrays here for our in data, eight out data for um, the information that we wanted to transmit to the devices and receive. And just some other things here with regards to, as you saw, the CP1 ready indicator that we used and so forth. So hopefully you found this uh, video very informative with regards to how to set these up and how to implement Modbus, uh, Ethernet Modbus UDP uh, functionality. Uh, using TCP is very much the same way, it's just a slightly different function block, but the setup's essentially the same. So thank you for your time and have a great day.